Howdy folks, welcome to Cray Outdoors. Today we are back in beautiful Letchworth State Park. Some of my most viewed fishing videos are uh, right here in Letchworth State Park. And every single year I get questions, emails and comments asking where it is that I'm fishing in the park. How do you get there? So in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly where in Letchworth State Park you can go fishing and how to catch the fish that are down there. So you're in luck, stay tuned. So Letchworth is kind of in the middle of nowhere. I don't have a big problem telling people where these fishing spots are, just because, like I said, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. The smallmouth average, you know, less than legal size. I'm not really too concerned about get it getting overfished. However, I am concerned about people going down there and, and leaving their trash. So please, if you fish these spots, pack out your trash. Please be careful down in the gorge. It can be a dangerous place. Um, it, just because it's legal to go down there doesn't mean it's a free-for-all. It's illegal to climb on the walls, swim in the water, all that kind of stuff. So just be very careful. It's illegal to be down there at night. Make sure you're out of there well before dark. And just like Zor Valley, Chautauqua Gorge, uh, Niagara Gorge, Ithaca Gorge, it can be a dangerous place. So please be very careful. It is run by the Park Service. If they start having problems, they'll shut it down. Uh, they won't let people down there. That's what the Park Service likes to do if, if they have problems with people leaving their trash or getting hurt down there. So please be careful while you're fishing here at Letchworth. This first spot I'm going to take you to is called St. Helena. Sort of right between the north and the south end of the park. I believe it's technically on the south end. You can see there's the sign. It's right on the main road. You can see it's got the picture of the little fish right on it, meaning it is a fishing access site. Just look for that sign, take that road to the end, and uh, you'll see the road that you want to hike down to fish. Here's the road down to St. Helena. Uh, it's walking only. Do not drive down there. I've seen people get busted for that before. Uh, the park police go down there. The only thing this road is used for is uh, the rafting company. It does river rafting down here. Down here St. Helena is where they pick up the rafts. The other place you're allowed to fish is well, I'll show you that later. That's where they launch the rafts um, in the, uh, the north end of the park. But anyway, yeah, this is what the road looks like. There's the sign with the rules, no swimming, feeding wildlife, climbing on gorge. I already sort of uh, warned you guys about that, but that's what the road looks like. Right here is where you park. It's a big, huge parking area. Of course, I'm parked down there in the shade. But yeah, this is what St. Helena looks like, and you just hike that road uh, down to the bottom, and that's where the fishing hole is. We made it to the Genesee River. We are now in the Letchworth Gorge. See if we can find some smallmouth. It's a hot sunny day. Fishing's been slow, but the scenery down here, just incredible. On a hot sunny day like today, the key is to find these pockets of shade. You'd look for uh, a gorge wall like this where it creates shade pockets over the river. And that's where the smallmouth are gonna be hiding and feeding. We got on ourselves our first smallmouth on a jig. Good size, Jenny smallmouth. Baby, come here, buddy. That is a good size smallmouth for this river. I'm going to try and not let him. I want him to get away. All right. Ah. These things fight so hard. Dang it, he spiked me. That's what I'm trying to avoid. All right. I got the jig. Let's grab him by the mouth. Holy cow. I cannot keep a hold of these things. <laughs> These Genesee River snog out again. Oh boy, I've got him gripped now. <laughs> He's not going anywhere now. Holy cow, these things you cannot get. Maybe I should have brought a net down with me. These things fight so hard. For this river, this is a good sized smallmouth. Look at them red eyes on that puppy. Red freaking eyes. Holy cow, he's looking at me. He's looking at me, he's kind of freaked out. We good? 16, 17 inches. Nice fish. All right, I'm just gonna let him go. I might have been on a bed. So we'll let her go. Boy, do the smallmouth in this river fight, let me tell you. This time of year the toads are mating, so they're just absolutely everywhere. If you catch it on the right day, they basically mate in these big giant orgies and it'll be toads as far as the eye can see. You hear that whirr noise, that's the noise that they make uh, when they're mating. They form these big 
uh, there'll, there'll be a female in the middle and all the males will latch on and try and uh, squeeze the eggs so they can be the ones to fertilize them. Oh look, there's another mating ball right there. Toad scattering that way. They're just all over the place in here. Alrighty folks, well we're going to call it quits here at this spot. Only caught that one small mouth, but it was a big one for the Jenny, so I'm happy. I'm also fishing the middle of the day. It's a hot sunny day, uh, worst time to fish basically, so I'm happy with that one decent fish. This here down at St. Helena is actually my dad's favorite spot. Didn't see another person the whole time I was down here. This is a very uh, good spot to, to get some peace and get away from people in the park. Uh, seldom do I see anybody down here. So that's why it's sort of my dad's favorite. It's also a good spot for big carp and suckers. Not my favorite just because there's not as many big smallmouth down in this section, but uh, it's still a nice place to fish and you can still find some decent smallmouth. Well, now for the dreaded hike back. It's about a 20 minute hike to get down here, about a 40 minute hike back. It's all straight uphill to get back up the gorge. Very important you get out of these places well before dark. Like any gorge in New York State, Light and dark is like a light switch down here, and it's very, 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 very difficult to find the trail out in the dark. The next spot I'm going to take you to is the Letchworth Trout Pond. You can see the sign says Trout Pond this way. You want to take this maintenance road right here, turn at the big Letchworth Monument. So after you make the turn at the Letchworth Monument, you want to turn onto this Trout Pond Road right here. It's the very first turn. This is right in the main part of the park. Super easy to find all of these spots. I just parked here to film where to uh, turn for the Trout Pond, but this is a neat old graveyard. Pioneer Cemetery. The park is full of hidden gems. We are now at the Letchworth Trout Pond. And nobody's here, which is awesome. We made it to the pond, see if we can find some trout or maybe some bedding bass or something. Just looking around, I can't believe the size of some of the bluegill in here. This pond used to suck. There's some big bluegills in here. Maybe there's some big bass in here too. Well, it's about to start seriously storming here, so I think it's time to call it quits. Well, we are now in a pretty serious storm. <laughs> I gotta make a run for the driver's seat. Here we go. Alright, I made it. <laughs> Whew. Well, we're gonna wait things out in the car for a while. Good news is, once the storm's over, it should be pretty good fishing everywhere. This is a pretty serious storm we're in right now. Feel it shaking the car. Hopefully none of these trees come down on me. The rain's finally settled down. We'll give the trout pond another shot. I timed that perfect. Right here's a good spot to fish when the weather's iffy because you're right next to the car. Of course the other spots in Letchworth that I uh, showed you and going to show you today are quite the hike so you don't want to go down there when the weather's iffy. We got on a trout. Looks like a decent sized one too. things are fighters. Holy cow, these things are fighters. Is this a brookie? I don't know what kind of trout it is. Just yet. Should have perhaps brought my trout net. Did I snag it? <laughs> I saw him striking at the spoon. No wonder he's fighting so hard. I snagged him somehow. <laughs> he definitely was swiping at it. He's looking at it and somehow I uh, somehow I managed to snag him. It's a good sized brook though. He settles down. I guess uh, I've got to drive back to Holy Ants. I'm not going to bother keeping him today. Beautiful brook trout though, here at the Letchworth Trout Pond. They stock these guys every spring. When they first stock them, they're pretty easy to catch. Uh, by now, they're, they're getting pretty finicky though. Alrighty. Let you go, Mr. Brook Trout. Those stockies. You don't need to be as gentle with them. Someone's here. They, uh, they're gonna die in here come summer anyway. Very next cast, and we got another brook trout. They're, they're hitting now that that storm's over. Whoa! Oops, didn't mean to do that. Alright, little brookie. Are you a brookie or a little brown? I can't tell. 
These things wiggle so much. Now it's another little brook trout. Another little brook trout. He was legally hooked this time. <laughs> These things are so slimy. Oh boy. Alrighty. They're hitting now that the rainstorm's over. Got a school interested trout right in front of me. Got him. <laughs> cool interested trout right in front of me boy these things are fighters too whoa these are fun trout to, to catch let me tell you these little stockies but they're fun it's another decent size one if i was keeping them definitely eatable size and the rain's back <laughs> right on cue all right the school's right down there Let's see if i can jig up another one I'm just kind of jigging comes another rainstorm time to get out of here again i think we're just gonna leave my fishing poles right there and hide out in the car bring my bag in. Weather well, settled down again for right now, so we'll try again. <laughs> Go back to trout fishing and bass fishing. There's a largemouth in here as well as trout. And I, there's the panfish I've been seeing swimming around are decent size, surprisingly. Oh, look at that. We had a trout swipe at it right off the bat. There's a good one. I should have grabbed my trout net while I was in the car, I forgot. <laughs> These things just freak out. They're fighters and they are freaker outers. I know people are going to give me a hard time for mishandling the fish, but like I said, come July, the water gets too warm in this shallow pond for them to survive anyway. And uh, I don't know, these things are basically doing it to themselves. They're just going nuts. All right. See you later. We'll put them over this way. It's not spook the school. There you go, buddy. And another one. Another nice trout. No, not as nice. Whoa! <laughs> I tried doing the swing it. Cast. I found another school of them. Another school of them over there. They're hitting at every cast over there. I should have just kept right on filming. My hands are pretty freaking wet out here. My hands are already wet from all the rain. All right, another little nice trout. Go. <sighs> Might as well just keep filming. All right, pretty good school uh, trout down here. So I'm just gonna keep filming. Got him. They like it that that fall. You gotta fling it up and then do the fall. The fall is when they bite. They grab it on the fall. Again, they're uh, these are pressured fish at this point. It's May. They stock them in April. So all these fish have probably been caught before. So we've got to, uh, we can't just crank it in. You got to jig it. And it's when the spoon is on the falls when their favorite time to hit it. I'll let you go, buddy. There's a trout. Whoa, it's a bigger one. It's a bigger one. That's a nice one. Oh, I came off. <laughs> that was the nicest one of the day, potentially. There we go. I'm recording right here. <laughs> Since that storm came through, man, I'm just getting these trout one after another, after another, after another. It's kind of fun. After not getting much action earlier today when it was hot and 80 degrees, now it's nice and cool. And uh, we're just nailing fish. It's right here at these, this trout pond, this little pond that's just stocked with these things. So it's kind of cheap, but it's fun to be having some action. And another one. Well, we're having fun trout fishing here. I could keep catching these trout all day and be happy. But uh, we're going to take a break from the trout fishing for a little bit. Now that I've got enough trout to make a good video, now enough fish to make a good video, <coughs> and we're going to do some bass fishing. These things squirm so much, dang it, now it's stuck on my head. <laughs> the lure's on the back of my head. Trout's getting revenge. Alright, there you go, buddy. Now I need to get this lure out of my head. Alright, there's the lure back. This is what we're using, just a little blue and chrome cast master spoon and fishing in a variety of different ways. Earlier, they were only hitting it when I was jigging it. 
now they're only hitting it when I'm slow cranking it. I got it really near the bottom and I'm, I'm cranking it really, really slow. I see some swirling going on down there. I think there might be a bass on a bed down there. Uh, I'd like to catch a big bass and there are big largemouth in here even though this is a quite small pond. So we've got jigs, super flukes. I might try the good old fashioned Senko. This is a very pressured pond, so bed's all over in here. Let's see if we can get some freaks and bass out. Well, folks, there's bedding bass all over on this side of the pond. I don't know if you can see through the water on the camera. There's one right there. He's chasing away every single bluegill that goes near, but uh, I just can't get these things to bite. They're, uh, the bass in this pond are so pressured. They're so used to people trying to catch them. You just can't. Oh, there he goes. He just chased after some bluegill. Can't seem to get them to bite on anything. I've tried Senkos, I've tried Jigs. Well, no bass today, but we did figure out the pattern for these trout. I even grabbed my net now, it's a little late. I don't even know how to... There we go. <laughs> and these trout just freak out so much. Now that it's, uh, now that it's dried off, probably a good thing I grabbed the rubber net. Didn't figure out the pattern for the bass, but Figured out the stock trout pattern today, that's for sure. Alright, buddy. There you go. There's one. Little guy. Zipper right in. Zippy doo da day. And he's off. Cool. All right, I think we're gonna call it quits. <laughs> Trout are getting smaller. Let's go catch some big smallmouth down at the river. There's some fighting smallmouth anyway. They don't get too big down there. So I was gonna call it quits. <laughs> but I couldn't help myself from taking a couple more casts in the deepest water. See if we can catch one more. And we did, and it's a big one. All right, this is truly the last fish of this spot. All right, let's get out of here and head back to the river. On my way to the next fishing spot, decided to stop here at Inspiration Point. My favorite's uh, overlooking the park. You can see both the middle and the upper falls from this point right here on the gorge. Absolutely gorgeous in through here. And ironically, this right here is actually the outlet to the Letchworth Trout Pond. The pond drains into here and then goes down the gorge over here. It's kind of flooded from that storm earlier. See the water going down there. That's the outlet from the trout pond going down into the main river. It's gorgeous in through here. So here you want to take this turn towards the lower falls. This is my favorite uh, fishing spot in the park. You want to follow the rafting signs. <laughs> So here again at this intersection we want to follow the rafting sign. So your rafting is uh, where you can fish. Then where you want to park is right here. There's a big parking lot there if you need extra parking, um, but the easiest place to park is right here in front of the Civilian Conservation Corps statue guy. And uh, yeah, there's a little parking spot here for, I don't know, four or five cars. And you park there, and the road that you want is right here. Well, folks, unfortunately, I think this is going to be the end to today's vlog. This here is my favorite fishing spot in the park. I showed you how to get to Lee's Landing, but unfortunately right now it's closed for whatever reasons. I, you know, they were launching rafts earlier today, so I really don't know why it could be closed unless, you know, maybe they close it now well before dark. I don't know. But uh, we're going to call it quits here today. I've got a long ride back to Olean. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. I showed you how to get to this spot anyway. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. Unfortunately, we had to cut it a little bit short, 
but at least we got one decent smallmouth down at the St. Helena spot. And if this spot is closed, there's always a St. Helena spot in the trout pond and vice versa. So at least we got one decent smallmouth. I put up a heck of a fight, caught lots of trout at the trout pond. I certainly still had fun. Might even still do some fishing if I see a good spot on the way home. But uh, I've got a pretty long ride back to Olean, so I'm getting pretty tired. I camped here all weekend as, as part of a job training thing. So uh, I think I'm going to call it quits. Always fun to get out here and, and do some hiking and fishing in Letchworth. The state park is just awesome. So uh, if you've never been here, man, it's a must-see. If you're in western New York or the Finger Lakes region, upstate New York in general, Letchworth State Park is definitely a must-see. Definitely check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed today, the sights and, and the fish. Be sure to subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you in the next fishing adventure.